This is Physics 102A at Porterville College, Chapter 1, Homework Solutions. We start with number 9. Number 9 uh, says 10 million kilograms can be written as which of the following? Okay, so what I would do, first of all, recognize that 10 million is 10 to the 7th, and then this is a unit conversion. Now the conversion that's important is to note that kilo means a thousand or ten to the third. So here's the conversion one kilogram is equal to ten to the third grams. So uh, ten to the seventh kilograms times ten to the third grams over one kilogram. You'll notice that the units of kilograms, because one is in the numerator and the other is in denominator, those will factor out. The units that we're left with are grams. So ten to the seventh times ten to the third is 10 to the 10th grams. There's the first mistake right there. Okay, so uh, the answer is B, 10 to the 10th grams. All right, number 11. The age of the universe is approximately 13.7 billion years. So that is our presupposition in the problem. This is approximately what? So starting with 13.7 giga years, giga means a billion or 10 to the ninth, we do the unit conversion, one giga year under 10 to the ninth years, that way giga years will divide out. Then I've used an approximation right here that one year is pi times 10 to the seventh seconds. If you want to be more accurate, you could um, calculate how many seconds are in a year, but this is a pretty good approximation. And in the end we get uh, answer C, 4.3 times 10 to the 17th seconds. Right here in the green, I've shown um, gathering together the, the like terms, 13.7 times pi, put those together, and then 10 to the 9th times 10 to the 7th, <coughs> excuse me, 13.7 times pi. Without a calculator, you can do that, 13 times 3 is, uh, is about 42. So I get roughly 42, and then gather together these terms. So about 42 times 10 to the 16th. Now the squiggly equal sign means approximately equal to, um, but this is more exact, 4.3 times 10 to the 17th. Number 13 has us converting from miles per hour to meters per second. So we need the conversion. We need to turn miles into meters and hours into seconds. And so, uh, move this up a bit here. All right, we know that one mile is equal to 1,609 meters. So there's the conversion, miles on the bottom. So miles and miles will divide out. Then we're left with meters per hour. Let's convert hours to seconds. So one hour is 3,600 seconds. I want you to note with all these unit conversions, what's important, first of all, is to have the right conversion. Secondly, you set it up so that the units that you want to disappear will divide out. Meaning, if miles is up top here, miles is on the bottom there, and they divide out. Hours was on the bottom here, so I put it on the top here, and they divide out. If you look at the units that are left after I've done that dividing, we're left with meters per second. So the answer is A, 38 meters per second. 18 is a question of significant figures. So to find the volume of a uh, uh, right rectangular prism, we multiply the length times width times height. And the important part with this problem is significant figures. Your answer can only be as accurate as the least accurate number that went into it. So this first one was five significant figures. This one was four. This one was two. Two is going to be the limiting factor. So our answer can only be as accurate as two significant figures. So 1,259 cubic meters rounded to two significant figures is A, 1,300 cubic meters. Question 19, express the following in scientific notation. Remember that scientific notation is always expressed as 
uh, a, the digit, one digit before the decimal point, and that digit will always be something between one and nine. So uh, there are the answers. A is 1.3950 times 10 to the fourth meters. I've added in that zero. You might think, uh, does the zero go there or not? Well, the assumption I've made is that in the, the way the problem was written, 13,950 meters, that that problem is accurate to that one's place, to that zero. Uh, it is an assumption I've made, and so with that assumption, I've kept it right in there in the answer. Part B, 2.46 times 10 to the negative 5 kilograms. C, 3.49 times 10 to the negative 8 seconds and D, 1.28 times 10 to the ninth seconds. 23 uh, involves the radius of the Earth. We need that in uh, MKS units, so megameters. When you see mega, that capital M, think of it as times 10 to the sixth. So instead of writing 6.371 times 10, or I'm sorry, 6.371 megameters, I've written 6.371 times 10 to the 6 meters. Now once we do that, part A says, assuming a uniform sphere, what's the volume? So I use volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, and we get the answer. Part B, what's the density? Density is mass divided by volume, so I take the mass of the Earth as it's given, divide by the volume, and since I'm doing a mass of kilograms divided by a volume of meters cubed, that will give me a density of kilograms per meters cubed. The question asks to comment on how this compares with the density of water. The density of water, that's something you can look up in a table or on the internet, is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So this is five and a half times the density of water. Number 27, again, a simple unit conversion, 70 miles per hour, express this in meters per second. Uh, this is just like one we've done earlier. You're going to multiply to uh, turn miles into meters by doing 1,609 meters over one mile. Multiply by one hour over 3,600 seconds to turn hours into seconds, and we get 31.3 meters per second. Since the problem was stated uh, to two significant figures. I'm going to give the answer to two significant figures, so 31 meters per sec is appropriate rounding. Number 31. 200 inches, we need to do a unit conversion. We want inches turned into meters. So um, I used conversions that are given in the back of the book. You could uh, take out some steps if you have the conversion between inches and meters. Um, I did it a two-step process. I did inches to centimeters and then centimeters to meters. So um, 2.54 centimeters in one inch and your inches are going to divide out, leaving us with centimeters. And then recognize that centa means 10 to the negative 2, or 1 one hundredth. So 1 centimeter under 10 to the negative 2 meters. Centimeters were divide out. We're left with meters. And 5.08 meters is the answer. Number 39. We're looking at a spaceship's uh, orbit around the Earth. So the radius of the Earth is 6378 meters. I think that was given in a previous problem. And even if you didn't have that previous problem, you could look that up in the uh, flap of the book. Now, the spaceship, it's traveling around in a circular orbit 100 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. So 6378 plus 100 is going to give the radius of its orbit at 6478 kilometers. Now we want to know something about its speed. This goes back um, to Algebra 1, where rate times time equals distance. Here in physics class, we use V instead of R for rate. 
so the the average speed of something is going to be the distance it travels divided by time. So let's consider one revolution around the Earth. One revolution, so the distance it travels, is the circumference 2 pi r. And it's not 2 pi times the radius of the Earth. It's 2 pi times the radius of its orbit. That's 6478 kilometers. Divided by the time it takes, which is 86.5 minutes. So here we have 2 pi times 6478 kilometers divide by 86.5 minutes. When we calculate that, that will give the answer, here it is right here, 470.5 kilometers per minute. Let's convert that to MKS units, meaning meters per second. So we need to first convert from kilometers to meters, and there we have 10 to the third meters equals one kilometer. Kilometers will then divide out. So we're left with meters per minute. Let's then convert minutes to seconds. One minute is 60 seconds. Uh, minutes on the bottom, minutes on the top. And we're left with meters per second, 78.42 meters per second. Number 49, I'm sorry, number 44. Density, by definition, is mass divided by volume. We saw that in an earlier problem. And so, dimensionally, mass is a dimension. Volume is not a dimension. Volume is actually based on length. It's length cubed. So the dimensions of density are mass divided by length cubed. Therefore, the units, the units of mass are kilograms. The units of length are meters. So the units are kilograms per meter cubed. 53 is really a question uh, of significant figures. It's no challenge to find the area of such a triangle, but what they want to get at here is how many significant figures. So they give the problem the lengths of the sides with three significant figures, 15.0, 20.0, and 25.0. Area of a triangle is one-half base times height. So you get uh, I'm sorry, 150 square centimeters. We want to express that to three significant figures. And 150 is a bit ambiguous because someone might ask, is, it, is that accurate to the nearest tens? Like, could it have been 151 or 152, just rounded down to 150? Or is that zero? Does that zero really mean to be there? Is this accurate to two significant figures or three significant figures? Well, one way to get around that is to write down 150 and put an underline under the zero. That underline, if you ever see that or you can write it that way, that means it's uh, accurate to that digit. But a way to avoid all this ambiguity is to write it in scientific notation. If I write 1.50 times 10 to the second, that's different from just 1.5 times 10 to the second. So 1.50 states, I know it, the answer to three significant figures. So you can write it either as 150 with an underline under the zero, or 1.50 times 10 to the second. Number 57, this is an estimate rough estimate here, like we did um, specs, how many specs are on the ceiling. How many heartbeats, rough estimate, are in an average lifetime? So we need to think how long is an average lifetime, and we will all maybe come up with different, uh, different approximations. Um, I'm going to go with 72 years. That's uh, average lifetime roughly for Americans. Although, if you want to talk the worldwide population, maybe 50 or 60 would be a closer number. I'll go with 72 years here. Times. How many seconds are there in a year? And the reason I relate to seconds in years is because on the next step, I'm going to relate how many beats there are per second. So how many seconds are there in a year? Pi times 10 to the seventh. Now I've got how many seconds are in a lifetime. Beats per second, this is an approximation. It's actually a low approximation, but um, close enough to get a rough order of magnitude estimate. One beat per second, that's 60 beats per minute. That's kind of low, 
Um, more accurate might be closer to 70, maybe even closer to 80. So recognize that my answer is going to be probably a little low. That's okay, because we're just going for a rough estimate. You multiply all those out together, you get about 2 billion. Um, the answer in the back of the book says 3 billion, and somewhere in between those. And that is the end of the Chapter 1 homework solutions.